Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about five types of deuce bags you may meet in Magic the Gathering. Hopefully not, but I think we can all share stories about this in the comment or if there's a deuce bag that you I've left out, uh, let me know in the comment section below. So the number one deuce bag in my opinion is the Trade Shark deuce bag who always ask what do you value that at? Do you have any trades? Do you have any trades? Do you have any trades? And that is like a red flag to me. Hey, this dude probably doesn't even know how to play magic. He's probably trying to make money from people. And especially true when it's not a non-local. So if you're a local and you're making deuce bag moves all the time, eventually you're gonna be run out because you're gonna feel uncomfortable there. But if you are new and you're just passing by and you're just trying to shark people, that's where it gets a little awkward in my opinion. And mainly because they can get away with it. If they repeat this behavior in different stores, they can maybe shark a little kid. And I talk about this, uh, maybe I'll make a longer video. I am very scared for the expedition, the $400, $500 full art foil scalding tarn. A little kid opens one, Yikes, right? Um, so number one deuce bag, the trade shark. What do you value this at? Do you value at this? No. <laughs> anyway, uh, number two, the I cannot stand losing, yet I'm playing Magic the Gathering. So the, the next one, so I'll combine two and three together. And then the person who's like, oh, I play Magic the Ga Gathering, but I don't understand variants. So I'll talk about the person who cannot lose. So when a person loses, they get like really upset, they get really offended. You can see it in their face. I've had the times where I've beaten a player and they've literally taken the deck and thrown it across the comic book store. And yeah, it was a draft deck. And I mean, there's probably not that many valuable cards in it, but at least you can donate it to a newer player. So that person uh, personality is, I don't know if it is common. I know Jeremy Dezani, the famous Magic Pro, exhibits uh, very similar pro personalities. Uh, traits to what I see in my local store. So I imagine that it's not like a typical behavior. So next would be the variance guy. And here's a difference is when the, oh, I just lost to you guy and gets really, really salty. I guess like we'll, we'll name the second guy, the salty guy. The third guy is kind of more depressed, like, oh, man, a variance. Oh, I got unlucky. I got too much land. I didn't get enough land. I didn't get the colors I needed. Oh, man, woe is me. I'm unlucky. And just an overall kind of depressing uh, little outlook on it. So that person, I mean, you play Magic the Gathering. It is a game of variance. Uh, you're not always going to get your ideal draws. I play, well, in Friday Night Magic, uh, what's it like, Hero to Magic or something? Oh, f and Lion, I play Red Deck Wind. And there's some draws that no matter what the opponent has, they can't beat me. But then they're like, oh, I got stuck in this one land. I didn't draw my black source for the Jun deck in the right time. Magic is a game of variance. Um, I don't understand why people complain about it so much. Uh, that's my personal take. Uh, number four is a very <laughs> interesting type of player. Um, it's a player who uh, is... I guess a newer player would behave in this way, but they have like this, uh, I guess they think that they're really popular and they're like the only popular person there and they wanna be really, uh, they're socially awkward, but they also wanna be extremely popular. So they do this by like a few different techniques. They can either say, oh, they're either going to bring in a trade binder worth a lot of money and try to impress you or try to become popular by showing a trade binder, which I know that sounds so illogical, but like people do it. and. I'll leave a comment below if you know that one guy in the store who brings like this like trade binder of really legacy staples. Everyone, I bring only standard to trade or I sometimes bring modern. But it's like, dude, why, why do you bring these legacy staples? Like no one's gonna trade for them. Like you know that it's a person who wants respect and they feel like getting respect is either beating players down as bad as they can or showing off a collection that is not really for trade. And that brings me to number five, the person who has not for trade, not for trade, not for trade, not for trade. It's like, if all this stuff is not for trade, like why, why do you bring a trade binder? Like, and um, this type of trader is like very, it's not like the number four example where the guy is objectively trying to become, I guess, popular via his, you know, trade binder or his pimped out deck or, you know, oh, I have, you know, 10 years experience in magic. You only have one. So I know more about magic than you. That's the fourth type of guy. The fifth type of guy 
I, I, I very, I'm very confused as to what the actual end goal is. The fourth type guide end goal is to be like liked or popular, I guess. The fifth type of douche bag, um, more likely is um, they just bring stuff and it is very frustrating when you see that last siege rhino and it's not for trade and then you ask him about you know that Soren and that's not for trade and then you ask him about um, the Nisa and that's not for trade and it's just like w w why would you bring a trade binder when nothing is for trade like do you not understand the concept of a trade binder and this happens a lot at my locals where you have a lot of people who have stuff and they want your stuff and your stuff is you know let's equal value and they just want to trade you crap for it like they just honestly want to trade you bulk rares for your stuff and it's like no i want that you know liliana like heroic hey i want that liliana and i'm going to trade you value in standard and that liliana is in standard so hey let's make a deal but then they end up trying to trade you like all these bulky cards and it's not really a trade sharky a trade shark is when someone trades a a dragon for a $500 foil for our Scaldenton, that's like a trade shark. This type of case is more like someone who really doesn't trade, but they like pick cards from your stuff and they like, they have greasy hands and they just, and they're like damaging your cards. They literally are damaging your cards, especially if they're not in perfect sleeves and they don't actually want to trade. So they kind of just waste your time. Okay, that's what it is. They are wasting your time. As opposed to like, so a trade shark is trying to shark you for value. This person is wasting your time because they have no intention to trade, but they are going through the whole process of trading. And once it gets to the point where like, hey, these are equal value, they don't trade a card that you actually want. Um, and it's very confusing as to why these cards are in their binder in the first place. So anyway, those are my five top five deuce bags. Uh, and that you may meet in Magic Gathering. Hopefully you guys never meet them. Maybe uh, leave it in a comment below uh, if you met this type of person or you know, uh, maybe there's another type of uh, Magic player I'm forgetting. Bye guys.